Adams is a former U.S. Department of Justice official and a columnist at PJ Media. Chris, good to see you again. And so we've got the email. I mean, it's, it's pretty lengthy. It goes on and on and on. And it's from a woman named Ruth Madrigal at Treasury to, among others, Lois Lerner at the IRS. And what this letter says, this email is, look, don't know who in your organization is keeping tabs on C4s, meaning those applying for charitable, if or exempt status. But since we mentioned potentially addressing them off plan, I've got my radar up and this seemed interesting. And she goes on in this letter to talk about a court ruling that she thinks will be very helpful to them that justifies the IRS really giving it to, to those who are PACs, who are super PACs, who are openly political. And she thinks this is going to be super helpful in the efforts to go after groups that are applying for tax-exempt status, like the conservative groups who got targeted. Do I have it about right? You do, Megan. And what this shows is a concerted administration, full-court press, leading up to the 2012 election, to do anything they could to shut up conservative groups, to make them quiet, to harass them. Lois Lerner's at the IRS, but she's dealing with Treasury officials, Treasury officials are now involved in this targeting of conservative organizations. This is a big deal. But understand that the entire administration from the very top, White House counsel like Bob Bauer, were hyper paranoid about Citizens United, a Supreme Court case that let free speech flow. And they wanted to find new ways to regulate free speech, to shut people up like True the Vote, like other conservative Tea Party organizations. And the IRS and the Treasury Department in that email is going full board figuring out how to do it. And what wound up happening was they targeted these conservative groups, it delayed their applications, hundreds of them basically gave up uh, or weren't ultimate, didn't ultimately get approval uh, because the process was so onerous. They needed donor lists, they needed all sorts of information that was not appropriate to ask for. So that's how the IRS went about sort of cracking down on them. Now, today, Chris, they're trying to, oh, we're, we're very sorry, it was inappropriate. But what we'd like to do is just push through this new rule that's going mm -hmm. to stop them from doing any voter registration activity, from backing any candidates, from doing all sorts of stuff that had previously been allowed. Now, now they shouldn't be allowed to do that because we think this new rule just basically cut them off before they even apply. And trust us, we at the IRS, we're going to apply that rule fairly. Yeah, these are new regulations that the IRS issued over Thanksgiving weekend. And what the IRS regulations are trying to do is to stifle debate, to regulate speech, to crack down on political opponents like pro-life groups or pro-constitution groups or groups that oppose the administration on Obamacare. They want to stop them from even talking about these issues. They want to stop a Catholic-related organization from saying that a certain person voted a certain way if they say it within 30 days of the election. This is a way for government to get bigger, for Washington to exert more power, and for free speech to diminish. But they say we are only doing that in response to the scandal over what we were doing before. That's the only reason we have proposed yeah. this rule. And then comes this email. Yeah, and it's like, well, we got caught doing it the bad way and the tricky and slimy way. Now we're going to issue proper regulations. I mean, that's what the IRS is saying. And all of the speech regulators and academia and lawyers who, who make money off this sort of thing. These people didn't like the fact that the IRS got caught doing it dirty, and now they're trying to do it nice and proper by issuing regulations. And then, uh, though they say it's all in response to what happened before, we now have the email that shows they were discussing doing something like they're doing with this rule. As far back as June of 2012, it was in the works with Lois Lerner long ago, and now it's out there and looks like it's going to happen, this rule change, unless something and happens. And don't, don't forget, Megan, it, it won't affect unions, and that's why they're doing it. So it shuts up one whole group, but it doesn't shut up another. That's Chris right. Adams, good to see you.